I'm so proud to show you for the very first time the AMD Ryzen 5000 series for high performance PCs, the world's first Zen 3 powered CPU. This is the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X. 12 cores, 24 threads, and a boost up to 4.8 gigahertz. It's a very special product, the ultimate enthusiast processor. As many of you know, AMD has just announced their new Zen 3 based Ryzen 5000 series processors. And I was really excited for this release and well, while this hasn't been quite released yet, they have launched it and they have showcased some specifications and improvements that they have made and also some of the claims of the performance increases and the performance metrics that they have shown in the live stream that seems to be really promising for the CPU. So I'm just here to talk about what I think about the new Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. Now it seems like AMD has announced quite a few CPUs already, even just at the launch event. Since they're announcing the Ryzen 9 5900X, the Ryzen 7 5800X, and the Ryzen 5 5600X. And also a surprise product that comes in a bit later in the live stream is the Ryzen 9 5950X. It seems like they've already gone and launched the highest end part straight out from the get-go, instead of like the previous launches where they launched the Ryzen 9 3950X a bit later than the Ryzen 9 3900X. I suspect this is because they're not using a new process architecture, so they probably have a much better yield ratio than when they first launched with the Ryzen 9 3900X, since you know it's been already more than a year with the 7 nanometer process with AMD CPUs. So basically the most important change that AMD has done with these CPUs is changing the CCX layout from 4 cores to 8 cores. Basically what this means is that the CPUs will have 8 cores per 32 megabytes of shared L3 cache instead of 16 megabytes per 4 cores like on the previous Ryzen CPUs. With the Ryzen 3000 series, AMD kind of just took the old Ryzen 2000 and 1000 series CPU core layout with the 4 core per CCX and 16 megabytes of L3 cache shared between those 4 cores and made it double into an 8 core and 1 die and then also doubled the die amount to dual dies and a chiplet to make 16 cores. But as you can see, the CPU is actually separated into many different layers. From the CPU itself, it's then separated to multiple chiplets. From those chiplets, it's then separated to multiple CCXs for multiple CPU cores. Now with Ryzen 5000 series with Zen 3, AMD has kind of consolidated the CPU cores even more so that each CCX now has 8 cores. And it's more in line to a monolithic approach on making CPUs like the old days, like Intel CPUs where the whole core is interconnected to one L3 cache and all the cores can talk to each other without any latency penalty. While previous Ryzen CPUs, when you jump from one core to another core in another CCX, you do get a bit of a latency hit. And it's even worse when you jump to a different chiplet. So with Ryzen 5000, it should at least eliminate the different core-to-core -core latencies in the same chiplet between the cores. And eliminating latencies is always a good thing, because you can see this in the Ryzen 4000 mobile CPUs, where the 8-core 4900H and also 4800H can be seen to almost beat the desktop Ryzen 7 3700X 8-core CPU even though the mobile chips are way lower TDP and clocked. That's because they have a single die with no different chiplet arrangement so they have a much lower latency between the cores and between the memory controller. So with the Ryzen 5000 series, it should also have a much lower latency between the cores and memory controllers thanks to the consolidated 8-core CCX design. And of course, that's just only one of the things that AMD has done to optimize the Zen architecture even more with the Zen 3 release. So yes, I'm quite excited to see the results, especially since AMD also showed the results in Cinebench for the Ryzen 5900X and just blew away my expectations. I know that Ryzen 5000 was going to have some kind of IPC increases, but they said it has 19% IPC increase, which AMD has been known to be quite spot on on their marketing slides regarding their IPC increases claims. So they've also backed it up with the Cinebench R20 run on the Ryzen 5900X, which scored 631 points, which is absolutely ridiculous since that thing is faster than some dual core laptop CPUs with hyperthreading from Intel like a Core i5 6200U or 5200U or things like that, it's pretty close to this thing and just using one core. So that's a really massive increase in IPC performance if you're just judging from Cinebench. 
And after all of that, they also dropped another bombshell, which is that the Ryzen 5950 x is also launched, and that thing scored 640 points in Cinebench R20 single core. The 5950X breaks the Cinebench R20 single threaded record that Robert set just a few minutes ago with a score of 640. That is just absolutely ridiculous because my Ryzen 9 3900X, which is overclocked, and this thing boosts to like 4.6, 4.7 gigahertz in single core load, like Cinebench R20, I only score 535 to 538 at the most, and I could almost never reach 540 Cinebench points. So reaching 631 and 640 on a stock CPU is just absolutely ridiculous. And it just makes me feel like my Ryzen 9 3900X is pretty much worthless now. Just kidding, it's still a good CPU, but yes, I really want to test these CPUs out. And what's also especially curious is that AMD is not touting their multi-threaded performance like they usually do. So it feels like the focus on Zen 3 this time is really 100% on improving IPC and single core performance. Since they never showed any Cinebench or Blender benchmarks showing their multi-threaded performance win, since they already pretty much have that crown since forever with their Ryzen 9 3950X and 3900X beating the 10900 k But yeah, it's also curious that AMD is not showing the multi-threaded performance because usually that's what they always tout as their strengths. So this time it's different and they're touting the single core performance. And also the gaming performance which is apparently better than Intel's by quite a few percentage points and also a lot better than their previous Ryzen 3000 series which makes me want to sell my Ryzen 9 3900X even more. So the 5950X, the highest end, which is a replacement for the 3950X, is apparently going to be $799, which is uh, about $100 more than the previous 3950X. So for the pricing on the CPUs then, it seems like people aren't that happy with it because you can see that the Ryzen 9 5900X is supposed to be $550, when right now you can find the Ryzen 9 3900X quite easily around the $400 mark these days. And you could also see the 5800X is also $449, which is still above what you can pay for a Ryzen 9 3900X brand new from Amazon or Newegg these days. And the 6 core Ryzen 5 to 5600X is gonna be $299, which is the same price as an 8 core Ryzen 7 3700X, actually a bit more than that these days. So the pricing have definitely come up and I feel like AMD is quite confident that their CPUs are better in literally everything than Intel for them to be able to put a price like this because otherwise if their CPUs are lacking in one performance metric or something compared to Intel, like their previous CPUs where they're good in multi-threaded but not so good in single-threaded performance, they had to price it competitively with Intel CPUs because then you can make an argument that, well, for the same price, you have better multi-thread, but you kind of like in single thread. But this time AMD is just pricing it straight up more than Intel. And well, I guess AMD is quite confident that this is gonna be better than Intel CPUs on everything. Even with an eight core, it's they're pitting it against the 10900K, which is a 10 core. So it seems like AMD is quite confident in their performance increases from the IPC gains for putting an eight core against a 10 core CPU from Intel. So this is very interesting times, and I think this is the point where AMD might finally be able to take the performance current from Intel completely, like everything. Like AMD is gonna be better at everything with these CPUs if what their claims are true. So it's gonna be quite interesting, and I'll definitely take a closer look once they're actually reviewed and launched, and maybe try to get one for myself to test. Oh, and one more thing is that Lisa Su also teased the RX 6000 series during the end of the presentation, this is the AMD Radeon RX 6000 series, which we now affectionately call Big Navi, thanks to many of you who nicknamed it for us. It is absolutely gorgeous and by far the most powerful gaming GPU we have ever built. And apparently they also showed some of the performance metrics, although it's really vague. I'm guessing that's because it's not as impressive as their CPUs. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, the performance metrics, they only show Borderlands, Gears of War, and also Call of Duty. But the thing is, if you compare this to some of the RTX 3080 benchmarks from reviewers, I know that their test platforms are not really similar exactly, and there's lots of other variables, but if you see reviews of the RTX 3080 with these benchmarks, the same games, at the same 4K resolution at ultra maximum details, you can see that the RTX 3080 is slightly above the performance metrics of the proposed big Navi GPU that they're gonna launch. So 
I'm guessing the big Navi GPU RX 6900 XT, nice, whatever their naming might be, it's just going to be slightly behind the RTX 3080, even based on their optimistic marketing slides that they have just announced. Which is a little bit disappointing, but I don't want to say anything too early yet because we don't know anything yet. Although AMD also didn't say that they have the fastest GPU ever, they just said they have the fastest GPU they have ever made. Not that anyone has ever made. There's quite a big difference there. And I think it's because they are not really going to be the RTX 3080 or 3090. But if they can price it at a really good competitive price, I think it'll be a big hit. So we shall see what they have to offer on the Radeon lines as well. But that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you do, please leave a like and maybe check out the AMD live stream yourself. And leave your thoughts on the comment section down below. Anyways, thank you for watching.